Since some of you are experiencing power outages around the world, I thought it'd be quite interesting taking a look at another one of these lights. And it's not that long since I looked at this one. And if you look at them side by side, they do look almost identical. Other than the fact that this one has a linear emitter and this one is focused, it's actually going to put out a fair beam of light. This one came from Aldi. This one came from a local shop. And when you flip them over, the similarities continue, but there are distinct differences. The buttons are a different shape, that's no great deal. They've got the same sort of layout for the uh, the little flap that lifts up and the little button that indicates the battery level. They've both got 4,000, well this one's 4,400 milliamp hour. This is, well this is also 4,400 milliamp hour. But there are subtle differences in the plastic casings. The mouldings aren't identical. But anyway, let's cut to the chase. I shall show you this one operating. I shall put the blue one down out the way. So when you press the button, and there's something bizarre about this, when you press the button, uh, there's a delay. Did you hear that delay there? And then you press it again, so that's full output. You press it again, and there's a delay, and then uh, it goes on to its medium beam, which is just one of these lit, and then it's got a lower beam, and a delay again. It's almost like it's a debouncing delay that ended up far too long. And it's clear that one of these LEDs is being driven. Uh, this one's being driven at fairly low current. This is medium current, and both of them together make high current. And it is, you can feel, when you turn it on, I can feel warmth on my hand from this. It's quite powerful. There is no SOS mode, but since it's you, I shall just press and hold it and wait expectantly for something to happen. Is it going to go into an SOS mode? No, it's not. I release it. There's a delay, and it lights up. Right, tell you what, let's get the back off it. So I've got to guess that this thing probably has two 2,200 milliamp hour cells. It seems to have the same specification as the other one. And I'd like to see if we can hack it, because I have a sneaky feeling that there's going to be the two channels for those LEDs, and they're going to have resistors specific to each channel. So by changing the values of those resistors, you could have a high output, a uh, uh, medium output, and a very low output for long-term battery use because although these lights they tend to aim at being a work light and that means that they put out a good punch of light the brighter it is the shorter the battery is going to last so i'm going to take the screws out completely so this comes apart i'm noticing little silicone washers on there they're making an attempt to keep the water out that's nice i take it off there's our little pack is this the same circuitry as the other one I'm not sure. I'm going to go and check that out. There is a heat sink here, but look at this. They've got the full pad here. Oh, I've just ripped a bit right off. And the heat sink covers a large area and then a smaller area here. The large area is right behind the battery. Uh, right, tell you what. I'm going to take a picture of this. I'm going to analyse it and we'll see if we can hack it. One moment, please. Good Lord, I thought that was going to be pretty much the same as the other one. And it uses similar components, but there's, it's just completely different. Uh, notably, this mysterious transistor here, which was just such a hard thing to work out what it was doing. So let's, for reference, take a look at the previous uh, one I looked at, which has an SP4533 uh, charge control chip. Well, that's not just a charge control chip, it's a power bank chip. And the other one uses the same chip. Uh, note that if you look for the data sheet in that chip, there is another one, another chip uh, with a different function with the same name. That's not helpful. But in the case of this one, uh, it was notable that one of the outputs that shows when it is detecting a load and it's putting out the five volts to the USB port, uh, it has an output that would normally drive an LED. In this case, it was used to signal to the processor that uh, it was detecting that it was discharged and the processor would go through its little flashing light, here's how much battery is left type display. It does it very differently with this one. It's the same chip, but it's not got any of the LED outputs connected. That is detected in the most bizarre way I've come across in a, in a while. It's also worth mentioning that the batteries... Oh, hold on, let me grab them. The little battery pack has a protection circuit board inside just as well because uh, the voltage select pin in this chip is floating and that means it's going to put out 4.35 volts for the charge. It's not going to end at 4.2 volts. So if you do change the batteries in one of these units, make sure that uh, you use protected packs. 
The switching of the LEDs is done via these little MOSFETs, A20, they're marked. And the high output one is via two parallel zero ohm links. And the low output one, ish, is via two one ohm links in parallel, which gives half an ohm. I measured the current at 3.8 amps um, at full power, 3 amps uh, at the medium power, and 1.6 amps, which is just the half ohm one, uh, at the low power, that equates to 11 watts, 9 watts, and 4.8 watts. That I think that's too high. I don't like it when they put links like that, and it puts it basically it's relying on the impedance of the MOSFETs and the battery to limit the current and potentially the tracks. Um, the easiest hack on this is just to cut one of these or desolder at one of these one ohm resistors. Um, if you wanted to make this a much lower output light for longer term operation. You could swap these resistors, well, just even just one of them over to here, and then use a higher uh, value resistor there, which would uh, mean that you'd go from high, medium, low would actually be much lower intensities and with much longer battery life. Um, things worthy of note, not an awful lot. I shall show you the other side of this circuit board and then show you the schematic. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. I think it's a monkey. A monkey's face, I'm not really sure. Is it supposed to be up that way or the other way? There's the three LEDs. Here's the output USB port. Here's the input micro USB charging port. The little 1.5 ohm inductor, it's flipped so it matches other. The switch that uh, is used to actually just wake up the LEDs to see the battery level. And this bigger switch that, uh, I don't know why it's a bigger switch, but it's probably just getting more use. The one that's actually used to switch the outputs to these connectors. I shall turn this upside down so that you can assess yourself is that the way it's supposed to go? Is that a monkey's face? Or, or is it supposed to be that way? I'm not sure that is. It's very strange. I was going to spank it and say that's me spanking my monkey. But that would be inappropriate. I wouldn't do that. I did it. Uh, next layer. This is kind of bright, actually. This is just a wee bit too bright. Is that better? That is slightly better. No, that's not as good. No, that's, that's way too dim. That's fine. That'll do. Uh, here's the SP4533, and uh, things worth of note. The 5 volts comes in to charge, and there is a voltage divider which signals to the processor that the USB has been plugged in, and that all means it'll start flashing LEDs and saying, I am charging. The There's a little snubber, a 1 ohm and a capacitor across the input for filtering, and a capacitor leading to the chip, and it then charges this lithium cell. Noting that lithium cell does have that protection, because if it didn't have that protection, it would charge up to 4.35 volts, owing to the fact that the select line is floating. It also has a little inductor with another filter, and a, the output gets boosted to 5 volts on demand, but it's not 5 volts all the time. It seems to be detecting when you've plugged a load into that, maybe it just pulses it and uh, detects that. Is this bright enough? Should I brighten this up before I continue? One moment, please. I'm just going to brighten this up. It is brighter. So that's the uh, the SP4533, uh, basically a power bank chip. Uh, it's notable that the quiescent current of the unit was 90 microamps, of which about 80 microamps will be this power bank chip. Next is the processor itself. It has its own little 3 volt regulator. That's uh, that little regulator up there that regulates down to 3 volts um, just to give it a good margin from the 4.2 volts of the, the battery. It has a little resistive divider that it uses to measure the voltage of the battery. Um, and then it's got the two button inputs with, these are all, I should just mark these, there are 1K, lots of 1K resistors. 1K resistors everywhere. They like their 1K resistors. The unit has one other input, the 5 volt active, which tells you when the uh, when the actual the power bank chip is kicked in and does its little, you know, on the, the LEDs down here, it'll show you the state of the battery and that it is discharging. It's got two uh, MOSFETs here, the A20 MOSFETs, A20 MOSFETs, and they switch the LEDs, one with the zero ohms, uh, no resistance at all, and one with the one ohms. They really, I think they're pushing these resistors just a little bit too hard as well. They're big-ish resistors, but they are potentially dropping quite a lot of uh, a voltage across. I mean, it's, it's not mega, but from a fully charged battery, I'd expect to see about one volt drop across those. And at the initial current, well, at three amps, 
um, on this one that would have been yeah about th three watts hmm but uh, that's not right it is yeah but that's the zero ohm link with the 1.6 amps it would have been half that so but it's still you know it's a lot of dissipation from these resistors but then that's what the the Chinese manufacturers do they tend to push the resistors quite hard are they basically if there's not smoke me off them it's fine now comes the bizarre bit that had me so perplexed and it's to make it compatible with Apple products. This is the output from the power bank chip. So there's the 5 volt output, there's a zero, there's the uh, data. Now it's not always 5 volts. When it detects that no load has been plugged into the USB port, the boost circuit will turn off and the voltage will drop down to pretty much close to the 4.2 volt rail or whatever it is from the battery. And this transistor uh, is turned on by detecting the difference when it goes from the battery voltage to 5 volts because this is a PNP transistor and it's connected to that output and uh, normally its base is tied via this 10k resistor to the battery rail and when the two of these rails, when it's relaxed, when it's not putting output the voltage between these two, the emitter and collector is, and base should I say, is virtually nothing, there's, there's no difference in voltage when the 5 volts kicks in, it suddenly goes above that 4.2 rail. Suddenly that 4.2 volt rail on the base is lower than the emitter and the transistor turns on. So this transistor only turns on when the voltage is boosted up to 5 volts. It's a very odd thing. I've not seen someone do it like that before. There is a resistive divider, which it's turning on, and, well, lots of resistive dividers. But for the data lines, there are two resistive dividers that only get turned on by this transistor, when the 5 volts is present and they provide the slight uh, voltage out from the data lines which tells an iPhone uh, or um, an older iPhone probably to charge at 1 amp. I suppose modern iPhones would charge at 1 amp as well. I guess this is purely to stop Apple phones trying to suck as much current as possible or just to make them charge at all because they tend to be very fickle things. The other thing it does is via this standard silicon diode, which drops about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volt, it feeds another voltage divider, and that provides a signal back to the microcontroller saying that the 5 volt, this transistor is turned on, and the 5 volt's active. Because if this is off, these resistors effectively pull that to the 0 volt rail, as does this one. And it just means that uh, this will be around about the 0 volt level, and only when that voltage difference occurs will that go up to 5 volts. That is very bizarre. That was the most time-consuming bit of the circuit because I really puzzled to get my head around that. But that is it. Uh, uh, there's the monkey circuit board again. See, the text is up this way. And I don't know what this is. Really don't know. Uh, very strange. Oh, worth mentioning this chip, the SP4533. Uh, I'll brighten this up again. It has... a. Uh, a ground connection in the back of it, which is also used for heat sinking to the general mass of the uh, ground plane. Very odd and interesting circuit. The heat sink is a bit ungenerous in the back here. I can't help but feel, you know, it's uh, just not quite enough. And that's another good reason to lower the uh, power in these. Because these are the little flip chip cobs, which uh, means that the, the cobs are basically aluminum core circuit boards with the bare LED chips physically soldered on without a case. Uh, it's a really common way of making these things. But it does mean they're going to run pretty toasty. And well, by run, underrunning it, by changing these resistors for something more appropriate, you can uh, make these last a lot longer. You can make it run cooler. And that's also going to be great for the battery because there is that heat in the vicinity. Because the battery sits here and there is that going to be that heat in the vicinity of the battery if it's uh, running at full power. So the advantage of this, you're going to get less light, obviously, if you raise the volume of resistors, but you're going to get much longer runtime. The LEDs are going to last longer, and it's going to run cooler in general. But that is it. It was an interesting light to take a look at. Uh, similar to the other one, but, but also very, very different. The circuitry was completely different. Very perplexing. But there we go. That is the generic Aldi-like, but not actually from Aldi, uh, rechargeable floodlight.